Hello everyone, welcome to the RP Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph and this is episode 2 of Orwell. And I kind of left you hanging in the last episode. There was this cliffhanger moment where Symes is telling us to look at the news because... Yes, there was a second bomb. Let's check out the headlines. Two dead after a second explosion. Explosive charge set off at Stelligan University in Bonton. At least two people died, three injured. Once again, a letter has been received just before the crime. And I agree, Symes, this is horrible. Similar approach, same letter. So these assaults are connected. And Miss Watergate was in custody at the time. So that's her out of the picture for this attack. Well, maybe she placed it there earlier. We don't know that yet. It just went off when she was in custody. Eh? This complicates matters massively. So much for our simple test case. I need to speak to my superiors, see how we are to proceed giving these extenuating circumstances. You did good today, you can log off and get some rest by clicking the button on the top right of the desktop. Try and get some sleep, I have a feeling the next few days are going to be trying at best. Okay, let's uh, check out the article here first before we go to bed. Half an hour ago, an explosion occurred at the campus of Bonton University. According to the latest reports, at least two people were killed, with a further three injured severely. The area was evacuated immediately. According to yet unconfirmed statements, the city administration office of Bonton received an anonymous letter just minutes prior to the detonation, which again contained the first three stanzas of the German folk song Die Gedanken sind frei. Exactly like the letter received before the assault on the Freedom Plaza yesterday. We will inform you about any developments on this event as soon as further details are available. You sure you want to finish your work for today? Yeah, sure. Just started. That was it, folks. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> uh, so I'm guessing this is the end of the first episode so orwell is also split up into a number of episodes the first one was uh, the clocks were striking 13 if i'm not mistaken and uh, let's see what have we learned so there have been two assaults we found hints of an activist group called Todd, of which Cassandra Watergate was a member. She has been uh, criminally charged with the injury of a police officer. We also found out that uh, she actually did it, even though she was um, acquitted on trial. She kind of confessed to it in a chat message with uh, Juliet Carrington. And she has been arrested, so um, let's see what's going to happen in the next day. A place where there is no darkness. I hope you don't mind if we get started right away. Well, that's why I'm here, Symes. Got tons of work, yep. I met with my superiors and they wish to continue with the test case. They believe in the capability of Orwell to handle this. And you, of course. Oh, well, thank you, Symes. Uh, thank you for this uh, vote of confidence. My superiors agree with me based on the information you have already extracted. The activist group known as Todd is worth investigating. It seems that this Goldfels is an important member of Todd, so we have clearance to consider him, or them, a target person. Now that Goldfels is a target person, there may be new data chunks available and documents you have already accessed. 
Don't forget to go back and recheck your sources. Let's um, let's get to that then. We can see in the relationship database we have so far Cassandra Watergate at the uh, center of the web. And then we have uh, her parents, Bruno and Alice. We have her lover and lawyer, Joseph Langley. We have Harrison O'Donnell and Juliet Carrington, with whom she has some uh, contact on uh, her social media profile, and who possibly are also members of the uh, activist group. And then there is uh, Mary Bly, who used to be a friend, but is no longer. And then Goldfels, who could be the leader of the activist group. He, I think she mentioned something about uh, being happy that he accepted her. So let's see, uh, take a look at the... Headlines once more. There is a, a whole bunch of headlines. Let's uh, just start at the top. There is a connection between the Bonton bombings. Attacks against Telegon University in Bonton and Freedom Plaza are connected, experts conclude. The bombing that occurred yesterday at Stelgen University seems to be connected to the attack against the Freedom Plaza earlier this week. This is the conclusion of the police division who was investigating the cases. In both assaults, a similar explosive device created with pure male volans appeared to have been used, police spokeswoman Steele said. The letters received prior to the assault seem to support this suspicion. While their meaning is still puzzling investigators, according to rumors, people have been theorizing the number of stanzas might represent the number of bombings, which in turn raises the question whether there might be another bombing yet to occur. We understand that some people jump to this conclusion, but there is no good reason to believe this, Steele answered when confronted with this theory during a press conference. Meanwhile, Stelligan University has declared that normal operation cannot continue under the circumstances so they will be closing their doors for the time being. The university has also put up a special front page to pay the respects to the assault's victims. That is something at least. Um, some tech news. The Davenport siblings, owners of the biggest social network timelines, announced major cooperation with software giant Rosen Technologies. It's a big deal. The internet billionaire siblings Ada and Alan Davenport, creators and owners of the most important online social network timelines, Located in Hillbury, are starting a major cooperation with the Bonton software giant Rosen Technologies. This has been announced in a press statement given out on Friday by the PR departments of both companies simultaneously. By utilizing the existing infrastructure and software development capacities of Rosentech, Timelines will be able to respond to the needs and requirements of the quickly changing digital world in real time. Timeline's executive Ada Davenport is quoted, our growing user base will profit from this by significantly reduced downtimes, tightened security and a sped up integration of new features. Alright, so far the tech news and then of course we have the weather. Bonton and Farview, as well as large parts of the western nation, will be covered in heavy rain clouds culminating on Sunday. If you had any plans for the weekend involving the outdoors in Bonton or Farview, you'd best forget about them. There is a massive low-pressure system incoming, bringing with it storm clouds and rain to the nation's west. Sunday morning will be hit the hardest until the late afternoon, so make sure you pack an umbrella if you need to go outside. Lest you become a sopping mess. <laughs> the uh, reporter is having fun writing this, it seems. There is a literal silver lining on the horizon, however. Over the coming week the cloud will move on and temperatures will stabilize at comfy levels. 
After a long and harsh winter, spring will finally win the upper hand. Okay. So, let's see. What can we find? Oh, now that has been unlocked? Really? Okay, so this was... Um, this was locked earlier. So, Goldfels. Let's click on him. He seems to have a picture. I propose to consider the question, are our thoughts still free? While this might seem to be a surprising question in our current world of ever-growing digital surveillance, freedom of thought is no longer self-evident. There is a German folk song called The Thoughts Are Free. The letter we are right it seems, yeah. Thoughts are free, who can guess them? They fly by like nocturnal shadows. No man can know them, no hunter can shoot them. With powder and lead, thoughts are free. I think what I want and what delights me. Still always reticent and as it is suitable. My wish and desire, no one can deny me. And so it will always be, thoughts are free. And if I'm thrown into the darkest dungeon, which is also a pretty cool game, all these are futile works, because my thoughts tear all gates and walls apart, thoughts are free. So when I was still young, Goldfeld says, long before I immigrated to the nation in 1993, I believe this to be a universal truth, that there are no borders for thoughts and no rules for what is or is not allowed to be taught. This was not because I thought people should be so tolerant, not at all, instead I simply held it dear that nobody expects for ourselves. Instead. I simply held it dear that nobody except for ourselves really knows what is going on in our heads until we choose to reveal it. Yesterday a question crossed my mind if the increasing interconnectedness of humans via modern technology serves more and more as a collective memory and brain of our society and there is an institution that is capable of monitoring every bitstream of it, how can thoughts still be free? Is it not likely that we will communicate only under great mental reservation to hold on to our knowledge, which means as a final consequence we will stop thinking? When I think of the increasingly aggressive operations of the surveillance machinery in the nation, I truly fear the answer to this question. That is why I created this blog. I want to encourage alternatives to the total control and safety bigotry of this digital world. All right, so he immigrated, so maybe we can get some immigration documents. We'll see. And he is the creator of this blog. All right, maybe we can get access to the back end of the blog, who knows. If Goldfels is the one who created the blog, perhaps he founded or even was the leader of the activist group, which has the same name. Then there is uh, some comments. Hey Goldfels, interesting name by the way. Just stumbled upon your new blog and that's some truth you tell here. The web was born in the sense of the ultimate freedom to be who you want to be. Express yourself, wasn't it? Now the gov has come to threaten this with real name policies and shit. Save your IP so they can look up who you are. So you don't say anything wrong, possibly. About time someone did something. Well, if you didn't have one before, you've just gained yourself your first follower. And Goldfels replies, Frankly, I'm surprised to find someone here at all. I thought nobody would ever find this blog at all. Thank you very much for your kind words. And yes, I'm very delighted to have my first follower. And then there is another message. Hello, admin. I like your things too. Could you one but 
now even more ah yes we got a spam command folks spam so does that mean that um, all of them are now available uh, are all of them available or not let's see so the first one the second one is still not available no doesn't seem like it it doesn't seem like it okay so there is this one though thought must change direction I thoroughly believed we were able to capture minds if only we could garner attention on Todd as a group and what we stand for. It seems my ambition was once again too much. After one and a half years recruiting two of my students and arranging three demonstrations like the one held at Freedom Plaza, I feel obliged to ask myself where we stand. Have we reached our goal? What has been sacrificed along the way? In short, are we true to the initial goal that formed the group? Frankly and sadly, the answer to the latter is a resounding no. We let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred towards those we thought to do us wrong. Thoughts are free, but that does in no way mean that they can attack and do whatever they wish. Instead of blaming others, I now see my high aim might well be the cause for all the events of the past months more than anyone else of thought, I feel responsible. As a consequence, I will halt my active engagement in this group. I firmly believe it shall be for the better of everyone involved, especially my students from Staligan. And then there is Concerned One who writes, please reconsider. A guy heard there was only a goddamn cop. They had it coming for long, it was messy, I know, all the way back to the thing I messed up organizing, but hell, look at the bright side, we made the news, this is what we wanted, what you wanted. Well, maybe it was not, maybe it was not, so he is no longer an active member it seems. And then he... Um, works at Staligan. The same Staligan where a bomb just exploded. Yes, that same Staligan. And he recruited students. Three demonstrations. More interesting might be that two students seem to be involved. So far, the evidence suggests that Goldfels was a prominent lecturer at Staligan and some of his students became involved in thought. Did he like recruit them for his cause? We need to identify those students, see who else is involved with the group. Uh, so, let's see. We let ourselves be consumed by anger and hatred. Hinted at trouble past of thought. Feels responsible for troubled past, hinted at troubled past of thought. Okay, so he feels responsible. Yes, he's literally saying that he feels responsible. And what is the big difference? He reacts with hatred and anger. Oh no, okay. I think that should be uh, he feels responsible. I'm doing my best, Symes, to get to the bottom of this, but uh, there is a lot going on. And um, Joseph Langley is chatting again. Hey, you. Who's he chatting with? Because uh, his girlfriend is um, at the police station. You're not going to get a lot of replies, Joseph, and you're going to think that this is because of your appointment. Haha. -ha. I'm sorry about last night, I really should have come over, it's just that this client is massively influential and could bring a whole lot of exposure to the office. We've been trying to get a meeting for months and it went rather well, so here's hoping. 
God, I'm such a stupid old man who just talks about his job too much. I'm sorry, it's just such a big part of my life. Hello, are you still upset? Can you at least answer me? If you don't, I'll start to worry. You know what I'm like. Okay. Let's see, breaking news, the first suspect in connection with the assaults is arrested. A couple of minutes ago, the Bontan Police Department reported that an arrest in connection with the recent bombings in the capital has been made. A young woman has been brought into custody thanks to the investigation efforts of a special task force, that would be me. How the woman is related to the bomb attacks, Kaufman did not cover, uh, so police spokesman Kaufman. However, it is rumored that the suspect is well known to authorities by other incidents. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to, you know, try and make it as um, exciting as possible. Alright, so there is the uh, memorial of Stalagan University. Let's take a look if we can find something interesting on the website. So the campus is closed down until further notice. Yesterday evening an explosive device went off on Stalagan campus killing a Stalagan student as well as a lecturer. Several other individuals have been severely injured. The authorities are investigating. This is an unspeakable tragedy, Stelligan President Hopkins said during the press conference that took place this morning. In the light of recent events, it is impossible to maintain daily routine. This is why I've decided to suspend all educational services of Stelligan University until further notice. Therefore, Stelligan campus will remain closed at least for the rest of this week with no educational courses or events taking place. Uh, also very interesting is that the uh, canteen has been elected to best public uh, dining hall. Okay. Uh, let's see, what kind of courses do we have at Stelligan? We have the technology department, which has uh, biotechnology, medicine technology, environmental technology. We have the media department, which has a Goldfels, I see. So we have media techniques, we have media ethics, media design and media management. So Goldfels is uh, apparently retired. Being a luminary in his profession, Abraham Goldfeld gladly accepted the offered professorship in the field of media ethics at Stelligan, from which he sadly retired in fall 2016. Right, so his first name seems to be Abraham. And he is uh, a professor, or he was a professor at Stelligan. Todd has held three demonstrations, yet there has only been two bombings, which might imply dot dot dot. It's definitely shot in the dark, but we absolutely need to do everything we can to prevent another attack. I agree with that. Take a close look at the past of each member with Todd. Find out the locations of all the demos they've held that might yield a hint. So, previously Professor Goldfels has held a position as a journalist at Der Reporter, one of the most renowned German daily newspapers, and was also a chairman of the Global Media Ethics Congress. In his works, Professor Goldfels never relents to emphasize the importance of privacy over public interest. Okay, so let's add these tidbits. Just the average run-of-the-mill terrorist trait. Uh, yeah, you'd be surprised, Symes. All right, and then uh, one of one of his publications is actually called "Die Gedanken sind frei." Okay, yep, yeah, that's gonna link him to the bombings. 
He literally wrote the book. Yeah, it seems so. That's a lot of information about this gold fields, yet only one other page could be indexed. Very strange indeed. I think the next course of action should be to look for people in his thought group, like the students he mentioned. Yeah. So let's see. Buffered Orlando is a alumnus of the biotechnology course and the founder and CEO of one of the highest grossing online grocery trading companies. Oh, Catherine Delacroix went here, okay. Ever since her early study years as a student of criminal law, Catherine Delacroix has been a member of the party. In 2009, when the party had been elected as government, Delacroix was named head of the newly created Ministry of Security. Joseph Langley went here as well. They're all uh, locals, it seems. Maybe they all know each other. He opened his own law office in the city of Bonton some years after his graduation from Stelligan in 1992. His law office is probably best known for having defended construction entrepreneur Elwood Hendricks in what gained public attention as the lion share scandal. And then there is Joanna McElroy who studied medical technology at Stelligan and is the host of the TV show for Ed McElroy's. So those are the alumni. Do we see... Um, do we see students somewhere? I don't think so. Okay, I don't need a new picture. Aha, uh -huh, the attendee list. Okay, so... Um, which one to pick? I'm guessing media would be the one to go to. And uh, let's see. And he's not mentioned here. Uh, summer of 2016. Abraham Goldfels. So, let's see if we can find some names here. Um, Ellie Troy, Tom Andrews, Lamont Becker, Timothy Cannon, Gene Carr, Brian Cook, Sandra Costa, Monty Dyer, Brandon Ford, Daryl, David Frank, Willie Hampton, Stella Hayes, Dorothy Hill, Stacy Sybil Hinkle, Eugene Walter Holbrook and um, yeah Juliet Carrington so one of the um, one of Cassandra's friends was a student of Abraham we have seen this name before haven't we yes she was a friend of Miss Watergate and she was a student of Abraham Goldfels give me a few minutes and we can investigate Miss Carrington as well. All right. And then who else do we have? Uh, Stacy Leslie, Scott Pete McLeod, Clara McConnell, Andrea Newton, Harrison O'Donnell. So that's also a friend of Cassie. And yep. Another target. So at least we found uh, some of the students. Let me quickly take a look at um, winter 2015. Abraham Goldfels. Let's see if there is uh, a name indicated here. No, there is not. And then the last one was uh, summer 2015 in media. 
and at that point he wasn't there either okay so I'm not gonna go through all the uh, other ones I think that this is uh, sufficient for the moment what it is below what is it that we still need to locate in this area not quite sure is it a picture ah uh, the new portrait maybe or let's see he was the administrator yeah that's nothing new it seems freedom is unfree was there something here that i missed uh, there has to be something there still yes okay let's um let's take a look at some more files so cassandra uh, a new police record so that is uh yesterday april 13 2017 um the suspect was arrested in her flat she willingly opened the door and cooperated with the arresting officer after having the warrant announced and her rights read to her okay not much new there let's check on Juliet Juliet let's uh, put a picture and she is a PR assistant at Rosen Tech that was uh, recently in the news for their um, their joint cooperation with um, with timelines all right so she's from 1992 she lives in Farview I don't think this is very interesting but uh, let's add it why not all right Jillian likes Stelligan University the targets Farview Public Library and Cafe Chestnut. You actually can dance and I got proof. So this is a, a picture of Juliet and Cassandra together. Is that really me? I gotta be careful around you. Apparently great photo. Who took it? Nice try Jules. A magician never reveals her tricks. Anyway, thanks for a great time Cassie. I must admit I felt kinda good. To go out for once not that i plan on doing that again anytime soon and then adam poor 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 adam says every time i ask you out you're so goddamn busy and then you fall for freaking muffins if i ever had known that before and juliet says maybe you need to spy on me some more bored to death tonight definitely need someone to come along and there is the um, the muffins. All right, let's see. Um, just go out with me and explore Bonton's famous nightlife. And then Juliet says, "You know, I'm not so keen on going out late night." Plus, I don't dance ever. Care to spare me, please? Okay. Not sure if it's relevant, but let's add it for now. Uh, I fully understand. I think I will then spend the evening in bed, watch movies, and eat the hell a lot of muffins. All right, you win. I'll be there in half an hour. Now, that torture and cruelty by my friend. Now, where is Amnesty International when you need them? Um, yeah, Cassandra Watergate engaged in torture, yeah, we don't need that. And then there is um, Esther Carrington, 
who posts happy birthday honey so good to have you back to mark the occasion we decided to update your profile on our family page i hope you like it happy birthday from me as well nobody took notice nobody cares nobody what did harry do this time jeez as much as i like him you really need to ditch him maybe people would care if you would be less enigmatic only one week left until i have to enter my thesis at abraham's course then it's goodbye stelligan i'm a bit scared of the huge gaping hole that it's going to leave behind ah girl you're gonna manage i know it's a scary thought at first but we'll stay in touch no matter what i feel much better already we definitely keep in touch Um, this drives me mad, even though Cassandra and I just got to know each other at the protest of Freedom Plaza, she stood up for me regardless. This woman is a heroine, not a terrorist. Okay, so they met each other at the uh, protest. And then, uh, let's see, Rick Denton says, if one pisses off the government, one must expect them to respond accordingly. Action causes reaction, that simple-mindedness rolls eyes. Also, this doesn't sound like the Juliet I know. You wouldn't even accept the duty of being the class representative when you were appointed. How come you care so much about politics now? Recently increased politically involved. Um, I'm not surprised you stand up for your beliefs. Underneath you're a strong one, but activism, attending demonstrations, is this still you? Sometimes people change their minds, sometimes other people help to get the right mindset. Find out what you truly care about. This is about our freedom, and I know what it feels like not to be free. What would you want me to do instead? Sit at home being indifferent? Rick says indifferent? No, I just see no use in occupying public plazas and throwing stones at poor men and women. This is a democracy, we have petitions for that. And then Harrison O'Donnell says I'm so proud of you that you are capable of using the essential tool of any good slacktivist. Hell, I would like to post a really slow clapping sound but timelines doesn't allow it. So just frigging imagine it if you can. Harry, while I really appreciate that you have my back in everything, I don't think you need to intervene here. This is a Rick and Juliet only thing. Thank you. Alright, so um, increased politically involved. I can add that one to the database. That's no problem. First Miss Watergate and now her. Is there some sort of brainwashing going on? Who knows? Let's uh, take a look at the uh, family... Um, Website Jonathan and Esther Carrington. A man walks into a bar and meets the girl of his dreams. They marry, settle down, and have four daughter daughters. Poor guy. What may sound like the beginning of a cheap joke of some kind of pulp fiction is in fact a fairy tale come true. When John met Esther, they immediately knew it was love. So it's no wonder that only a year later they got married in a small chapel near Lake Springwell. At the same time they began to build a house in Malloy Court, a cozy little spot in Farview, which would serve as the very foundation for their family, and which they still inhabit to the day, happily ever after, so to speak. In 1985, their first daughter April was born. Little did they know that there were three more to follow. So you have April McIntyre Carrington, who is the headmistress at Farview Elementary. April is the firstborn daughter in the Carrington family. As you might have guessed already, her name is not a coincidence. When the little girl decided to be born on the 1st of April instead of the March date the doctors had calculated, John and Esther spontaneously decided to name her daughter in tribute. Now fully grown and independent, April is married to Roy McIntyre. Then you have um, May. <laughs> May Carrington, okay. Because she was born in November. Because that makes total sense, right? 
It had always been crystal clear that May would found her own company one day and in 2012 that's exactly what happened with a little help from some friends and her caring parents she managed to create the today well-known clothing startup McLeod. With more than a dozen employees, good for you May. Then we have June, who is a uh, chief engineer at Bonton Machine Works. Little June was so fond of everything that had the slightest bit of technology on it, it began to worry John and Esther, but there was really nothing to be concerned about. June has proven to be one of a kind engineer. And now the Bonton Machine Works company is profiting greatly from that fact. And then there is Juliet. Carrington. Uh, let's pick up the birth date. Um, I don't think we really need uh, banana nut muffins in the database. To kill a mockingbird, probably also not very relevant. Since the nestling of the family showed up a little bit unexpectedly, the parents, Jonathan and Esther, decided that they would end the strictness of the naming pattern her sisters had followed in favor of a slight aberration. Juliet learned to play the guitar, even developed the plan to become a professional musician in a band. However, she decided to end her band career when she was single again and focused on her studies of media economy at Stelligan University. Alright, so um, the parents we're gonna add. And then we're gonna add that she was uh, a student at Stelligan, which we already knew. Um, and she is single and a former member of a band which is in conflict with uh, something else. I'm going to try to make uh, some shorter episodes since um, the previous one was uh, over one hour and, and my all my videos I think have been uh, close to that so I'm gonna end the video here and in the next episode we will take a further look at um, Harrison, Harrison O'Donnell and then we'll also check Rosentech which is the company of Juliet's parents apparently. Oh no, it's it's um, it's where Juliet works. Yes, she's a PR assistant there. Okay, I hope you're uh, enjoying this game as much as I am. Thank you very much for watching. And um, yeah, want to see more? Hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying it. Hit the like button as well. And um, I will see you in the next video.